Hey everybody, it's Ripley again. Welcome back. Just letting everybody know. Remember back in derivatives when we started putzing around with chain rule? And I said, if I could teach you one thing about differential calculus to do really, really well, chain rule was the one. The same is true of integration by substitution. This is key. And the reason it's key is because integration by substitution really is chain rule backwards. All right? Is chain rule run backwards? And let me let me give you an example. Backwards. Now look at the rules that we have for integration. Right? We know that we can integrate a sum. We know that we can integrate a difference. But the question is, is how do I do something like this? How do I take the integral of something like? Whoops, that would be crazy. No, let's do that. Let's go the integral of x e to the x squared dx. Now, look at what's going on here. I have an x squared sitting right here. I have an x. There's a product in between them. Now, what students will often do is they'll go, okay, well, can I go, can I go the integral of x dx and then multiply that times the integral of e, whoops, e to the x squared dx? And the answer to that is a ah, resounding ah. And here's the problem. The integral of a product is not equal to the product of the integrals. In other words, there is no product rule per se for integrals. These are not equal to each other. And the, the reason for that is really, really simple. Here, here's the problem, because function, er, functions, because <laughs> students will obviously, well, wait a sec, Ripley. What about, we know that the limit of a product is the product of the limit, and the integral from a to b of f of x dx is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum as i goes from 1 to n of f of x sub i times delta x, where, of course, delta x equals b minus a over n. And you'd be absolutely correct in saying that. And that the limit of a product is the product of the limits. The problem is, is the sum of a product is not equal to the product of the sums. So we're dead. Because remember when we first started doing integrals or definite integrals? We, we took this part first. We have to deal with this sum first. And that's not the case. So I'm dead. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do something really, really tricky. And I realize that I'm starting kind of hard with this one, but, but let's rewrite it. If I do the integral of x, e to the x squared, dx. Now, what do you notice about e to the x squared? Well, if you think about it, what it is, is it's e to the u. If I were to let f of x equal e to the u, and let g of x, or excuse me, u of x, Sorry, you guys, getting crazy. And let u of x equal x squared. Don't you agree that f of u of x would be equal to e to the x squared? Now, remember when we took derivatives, it was really important to see what was being composed with, with what. In this case, it's not so much. We're going to do something really, really simple. All that we're going to do is we're going to account for this entire integrand, including the dx. I know the integrand technically is just this little chunk. But including the dx, we're going to take care of all of this stuff. But we're going to substitute it, and we're going to make it simpler. The point of integration by substitution is to take a complicated integrand and make it simpler. So the question that I always have my students ask is, do you see, do you see a part of the integrand, integrand. This is the way it starts. A part of the integrand that looks like, <coughs> excuse, <coughs> excuse me, a derivative vative, of another part. That's always the fir first place that you start. All right, especially with a problem like this. Well, hopefully the answer to that question here is obvious. Isn't x close to the derivative of x squared? What do I know that the derivative of x squared is? Well, it's 2x. Well, that's really, really close. So watch what I'm going to do here. I'm, gonna, I'm simply going to let u equal x squared. Now, notice what I'm really saying here is u of x equals x squared. So I have u as a function of x. So 
Watch what's going to happen. When I'm done, I'm going to stick u in for x squared, which already makes for an easier looking term inside the integrand. But here's the problem. This has an x and a dx. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to differentiate u of x with respect to x. That's what I'm going to do. Now, the way in which I'm going to write this is du over dx, right? Because, the, I mean, think about how I do this algebraically. All right, what's that equal? Well, if I differentiate u with respect to x, I get 2x. But here's the hard part. I, the problem is I have to account for this dx. So what I have to do is I have to algebraically make a dx. Well, look at that. It's sitting ready-made for us right there. So what I get is du equals 2x dx. Now, this may seem like a shell game to you right now, but watch how elegantly done it is. It's so, so simple. And then I like to start with a harder problem and then sort of back off to easier problems because I really want you to see that what we have is this relationship of compositions of functions or pulling the chain rule apart. All right, now watch what happens here. I'm going to account using th this box of information right here. I'm going to account for every part of this integrand. All right. Now, look close. I do have to do a little bit of algebra, right? Look close. I don't want an x, or excuse me, I don't want a 2x dx. I want, I'm going to write all over this before it's done, aren't I? I want x dx, don't I? That's what I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide out, I'm going to divide out my 2 because I need an x dx not a 2x dx. So what I end up with is du over 2 equals x dx. So here we go. Well, I know that x dx is just du over 2. I know that e to the x squared is just e to the u. Now, I have broken no rules at all. All right, let's use an implies arrow here. I've broken no rules. I have accounted for all of the pieces, in other words, this integral is exactly equal to this integral. I've just substituted new stuff. Now, I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to use the commutative property of multiplication because, remember, theoretically, this du is the width of the subinterval that's being multiplied times the height of the subinterval. So watch what happens here. I have a constant. Remember, with a constant with a, an integral, I can pull out in front, and I end up with e to the u du. Yeah. Now that's a heck of a lot easier, and this will screw you up as far as your brain, than the integral of x e to the x squared dx. But they are the same, and the way that I got there was with this substitution. Now watch what happens. I end up with 1 half. What's the antiderivative of e to the u? Notice this variable and this variable match up. Life is good. I end up with 1 half e to the u. The antiderivative of e to the u is e to the u. And plus c. But there's only one problem. Remember. Just remember, this whole function started out as a function of x. So what I have to do is I have to back substitute my u. And I end up with 1 half e to the x squared plus c. Now, I've screamed and yelled and waved my arms and told you guys constantly, if you want to check your antiderivatives, simply take the derivative of your antiderivative and see if you get the integrand back. If I differentiate... 1 half e to the x squared plus c. Well, let's see what happens. Now, this is where chain rule is really going to come into play. The derivative of e to the x squared is e to the x squared times the derivative of the blah, right, the x squared, and I get 2x, and then this 1 half is along for the ride. The derivative of c is 0, so that goes away. Watch what happens. Goodbye, goodbye, and I end up with x e to the x squared, which is exactly the integrand, here it is. That's the integrand. x e to the x squared is golden. Now, watch this. I'm going to play a little bit a little bit nicer. Maybe, maybe not. You never can tell. What if I said this? What if I wanted to take the integral of, let's go, um, I don't know, let's go 5x plus 1 raised to the 10th dx. All right? Well, notice here, what I have is a u, which is going to equal 5x plus 1, right? And then what that will imply is that u to the 10th is equal to 5x plus 1 to the 10th, 
You get it? You see what I'm doing here? I'm showing that there's an actual composition of functions going on here. Now, some of you may say, well, why can't I just say that this is equal to 5x plus 1 raised to the 11th divided by 11 plus c? Well, why doesn't that work? Well, it's easy to prove. Let's take the derivative. The derivative of 5x plus 1 to the 11th over 11 plus c is equal to, now, this is just a blah to the 11th, right? So I get 11 times blah to the 10th. This, this 11 is just a constant. It's along for the ride. But then times the d blah, which is times 5. These cancel. And what do I end up with? 5 times 5x plus 1 to the 10th. I'm off by a factor of 5. When I took the derivative of what I thought was the integral, I'm off by a factor of 5. So the question is, how do we substitute that out? It's easy. Watch this. Nothing to it. I'm going to see what's composed into what. I'm going to let u of x equal that. It's going to be 5x plus 1. I'm going to put a little line here. Right. Okay. Then I know that du over dx is equal to 5, which implies that du is equal to 5 dx. Do I want a 5dx? Does anybody see a 5dx anywhere around here? Nope. I just see a dx. So what am I going to do? I'm going to divide through. I'm going to get du fifths equals dx, which implies that this integral up here can be rewritten as. Now, let's, let, we're going to start getting a little more savvy with this. All right? I'm going to rewrite this as u, right, which is 5x plus 1 to the 10th u to the tenth, and then times, now remember, here's what we were interested in. I know that dx, this guy right here, is equal to du over 5, and I definitely want a du, and the 1 fifth is just a constant. It's along for the ride. Now watch what happens. This is equal to 1 fifth u to the 11th plus c. Look at how much easier that was. Right? Could you imagine? Think about this. What if I told you that you had to multiply this thing out using Pascal's triangle or some other mnemonic device? You had to multiply it out to turn it into a polynomial rather than this factored polynomial and then have to take the antiderivative. Look it up. Oh, it's so easy. So yummy. The problem is this started out as a function of x. This is a function of u. But I substituted u. Right? So this just turns into 1 fifth 5x plus 1 to the 11th 